Time for race four of the T2.5 World Tour. This one is Deuce France, which is actually just the reverse of the route we did just three days ago uh, on our normal T2.5 Thursday night race. Difference is Thursday's night, night's race, I thought I did quite well. Very, very flat to start with. Then you got the little climb over the water and then it's really lumpy towards the end. I managed to hold on with the group. This time we hit those lumpy hills pretty much straight away before making the climb up over the water and then back to flat. I think this is going to feel very, very different from the race on Thursday night. And I'll probably find it a little bit more difficult because I won't settle into much of a rhythm. And I'm going to have to be quite punchy from the start to keep it within the group. But uh, if I can hold on through the rolly hills, up the KOM bit and then onto the flats, fingers crossed that'll put me in a good position towards the finishing line. But let's see how it goes. World Tour race number four, one lap of Deuce France. Relatively flat, but with a little bit of lumpiness in there and a little bit of a climb up to the bridge over the water. This is going to be interesting to edit as I have seven different riders who sent in videos. Uh, we have Pavel, who's in the C cat. Jonesy, who's recorded this one in the B cat along with Noel, who's also in the B-Cat. Then we have the usual C-Cat riders, Julia. Kenneth recording the D-Cat as well with that wonderful uh, T2.5 World Tour race banner around the outside. We have John, who's doing the A-Cat, just the two A-Cat riders, John and Eric in this one. And then we have me, who's going to try his best to stay in with this group. As I mentioned before this race, this is the opposite to the course we did on Thursday, where on Thursday it was a flat first, felt a little bit easier to get into the race. I'm a little bit concerned we're gonna hit the rollers first and whether I can stay in this rather big group here uh, and get onto that, to the top of that hill as part of this group. But we'll, we'll wait and see, who have we got in the DCAT? We've got Jay Dreyer, A Mott, Latix, Jay Hall. It's moving around. Tim Glasby. Uh, it's moving around too far, fast to see who we've got in there, but lots and lots of riders. Uh, and sticking together at the moment, not doing too badly. Two and a half minutes in, and you can see we're already on the, the rolly, hilly section. I've had to put in a bit of effort there to, to try and catch up with that group that I thought for a minute might just about get away from me, but I managed to settle back in. Uh, and I can feel already, this is a, even only less than three minutes in, I'm really starting to feel it already knowing that I've got to kind of push up these hills to stay in this group because they'll disappear very, very quickly if I don't. If we have a look around, who else we have? Let's have a look at the sea cat then. They're all sticking together pretty well as well. Um, a couple of people, George is in there, a Bowman, a Scott, John Bushell, uh, that's, it's moving around as well, really quickly like it normally does. Uh, and Pavel taking his turn on the front here. If we have a look at the B-Cat race, how are they doing? They're a little bit more spread out on the road actually. And we look like, looks like D-Stark, I don't know whether that's an intentional breakaway. Uh, N. Corbin putting some power out to try and catch. I'm assuming they'll come back together again. Uh, but that's definitely more spread out, but less people in that. C. White, B. Bishop, J. Jonesy. Is that Dougie Munro and N. Allen in this group? Coming up to five and a half minutes, and you can see I've had to put out some spiky efforts again. I'm not settling into any rhythm whatsoever because it's either going up or going down, uh, and I just can't settle. Really feeling it a lot more than I did on Thursday night doing the course the other way around kind of as expected in a way but feeling it more than i would have liked to let's have a look over at some of the other categories here we have the c cat all riding together pretty much can't see any splits in that group we have a look at the two guys from the a category riding together quite nicely i'm sure they'll probably stay like that till towards the end i guess and then over in the b cat a nice, rather leisurely pace for the B-Cat. 
I did hear that they uh, they didn't go particularly quickly through this race, uh, and they were having difficulty with with people trying to make a breakaway because of the the group would just slowly reel them in. I wonder if we can spot any of those as we kind of see them. Uh, Chris White off the front slightly here, but no big numbers. Uh, looks like that's just going to be a pretty casual ride around. Actually, just as I say that, D Stark's gone for it. 7.1 orange zone watts per kilo going for it. Are they going to reel him in or is he going to make the breakaway? Let's stay with it for a little while as they go. And Corbin leading the charge. Noel also leading the charge to try and bring him in. No big numbers to do that though. Um, I'm assuming the, I don't know, will the, will the draft capacity of the group just gradually bring him back? Well, uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. The D Starks managed to stay out the front for well, just over three minutes here. Got a seven second lead on the group. It doesn't seem to be increasing that lead. It seems to be staying a pretty steady state, which... Uh, Probably suggests he's putting out a lot of, I've seen other effort there, 4.2 watts per kilo, trying to keep that gap going. Let's have a look around the groups. Let's have a look at how much I'm struggling. Look at all that red. <laughs> and boy, am I feeling it. My hope now is that it does start to level off a bit. It's not quite as um, bumpy we're, as we make our way <clears throat> to the climb up over the, um, the water. I don't even know if that's got a, a correct name. Let me know in the comments if you know uh, that little climb. Um, because I know that if I can get out the other side, it's relatively flat and I've got some chance of staying with the group. And that's what I need to try and achieve. I need to stay in that group for as long as possible. Over at the Sea Cat, maybe a little bit more strung out. Not really. Kind of all working together still. We've got a couple of seconds back to, to Craig and A. Scott, I think that is. Uh, but I'm sure that gap will close back up again. I think it's just uh, the nature of the rolling hills. And I'm sure the two guys, as they are, yes, in the ACAT, riding together, 7.3 kilometers to, uh, gone, 16.7 still to go for those guys. The bees have just got eight kilometers in. And as you can see, they have reeled in D Stark. He's back in the group again now. Awesome effort to try and make that breakaway. Not. Maybe if someone had gone with you or managed to stay with you, you could possibly have made it stick. I don't know. I'm not an expert on drafting. Definitely not yet. But uh, awesome effort anyway. Let's have a look over at Kenneth, who's in with the, the DCAT group, who pretty much are all still together. I'm uh, sat within that group as well. So, yeah, not a lot happening within the categories in terms of trying to break away. I mean, trying to break away from that big D group and the C group is probably going to be quite difficult. Uh, as the groups are so big. And in fact, for, for someone like me, it is just hanging on to the group. <laughs> There's no thought of uh, of trying to push out the front and, and become someone attempting a breakaway. And definitely not in a race like this, because you can see all the red bursts that I'm having to put out just to stay in with the group. Eric and John just making their way up. There we go. That's what it's called. The Aqueduct, Aqueduct KOM. Uh, both going, I don't know whether either of them will attack at this stage whether they're just going <laughs> to ride together. John putting out the red numbers there for a second, both putting around five, five watts a kilo, coming up to the top. No, neither of them look like they're going to put out a significant burst of effort to, to get over. Oh, Eric goes. I completely lied. Just as I say that, Eric goes for it. John's got to keep up some big orange numbers from both of them. Can John catch onto the back of Eric's wheel? And he has he doesn't he's not going to push on through though he's closed that gap back up interesting attack there from eric great to watch let's see if any of the other guys where are the uh the other groups coming that's the c group they are at 10.8 kilometers the same as the b group actually so the c is traveling just as quickly as the b group in this race and they're both coming up now to this section as well is there going to be an attempted breakaway in either of these groups uh to try and do what eric tried to do at the top can't see anything major happening here in the b group let's have a quick look at the c group we've got p mcmillan's actually i've missed that p mcmillan is nine ten seconds off the front here george three seconds pzzu with the one second let's jump across 
have a look at him, his camera angle. He's trying to close the gap on George and then P. McMillan. Is that 10 second gap enough already? I missed where that attack came from, but there's certainly a split now in this C category after that climb. Uh, five seconds, I've got uh, M. Gregory five seconds back, A. Scott, Andy Bullimore. Can't quite see because Pavel in the way. Is that John Bushell as well? Um, I'm interested to see if that gap comes back down. You know, a little bit of downhill now as a group in the draft. And wonder if they'll come back together. The uh, the D cat have also just coming up this group. Let's have a look at my pain. I'm doing my best. As you can see, I've lost the back of this group here. Putting out red zone as I can. A bit of a sprint at the top. And right now I'm thinking. I need to catch the back of that group because if they hit that downhill without me, I've got no hope. My heart rate's up at 179. I don't have a lot more to push. And I can slowly see them disappearing and they're about to turn left just now. And I'm really hoping that I can catch that gap. But it's feeling, feeling at this point pretty inevitable that I've lost the group. Uh, and I don't have a lot more to push. I don't have a lot more to give. I can still feel the race from Thursday in my legs. Uh, and you can see there's a five second gap already. And it doesn't, I'll be honest, it doesn't come down uh, as much as I try and want to. It doesn't come down. So, uh, yeah, that is how I lost the back of the group in this race. Over at the C-Cat, uh, the B-Cat, apologies. We've got N. Allen, who's unfortunately dropped off the back by 22 seconds. But the rest of the group are back together. Nothing nothing came of any attacks on that hill. Uh, and we'll just jump back over to these two, Eric and John. Is Eric making gradual attacks here? Because John's dropped. Uh, message just come up saying I've done. Great effort, John. Coming back from the illness uh, and some other things as well. So awesome effort to try to stay with Eric. I know Eric is, is not easy to stay with, as most of the TC45 group are aware. I've managed to find myself into in a little group here of four, myself, Rob, A. Evans, and Kenneth, but I'm not feeling good. I'm on the verge of being sick here. It came on really suddenly as well. I did not feel good at all, and I ended up having to back off a little bit. You can see the split. There's 15 seconds now between us and the group that went out in front that we kind of lost on that climb. A. Hugovine, El Warrior, DC Mark, Tim Glasby. Those guys kind of disappear on up the road, as you can see. The three of those guys disappear up the road ahead of me. I'd normally look behind me now and try and think, who can I stay ahead of? But I really did not feel good. I had to uh, kind of back it off a little bit. There's uh, Kenneth riding with those three guys. I think the the chance of catching that group in front is probably gone. There's a bigger group of, of riders all drafting together. So I was a bit premature in that last bit. I did manage to keep up with these guys for a little bit longer. I caught them. We caught up with Tim Glasby as well. Rode as a group for a while. That just shows you how I really wasn't really very good because in my mind, I dropped off the back of these guys a lot sooner than this. You can see my power graphs all over the place. I never settled into a rhythm for the entire race. And I've kind of just, uh, yeah, I, I, in a minute, there is a point, I promise you, in a minute where I back right off uh, and can't carry on for much longer. If we go over to have a look at Julia in the C-Cat, this whole group still together. A couple of people off the back, as you can see, Andy Bullimore, A. Scott, M. Gregory, about 26 seconds behind. But in the hole, and then Craig and A. Bowman back 132. In the hole, a lot, a big group of the C-Cat still together. Nobody kind of gone off on their own out the front. Uh, I'm sure talking about on his own out the front. And there's Eric. Uh, and then we'll have a look over and see if anyone else is doing any more attacking in the uh, B-Cat. Still riding together. There's been the odd attack that we've seen every now and again as Jonesy ramps it up. That's 10 over 10, nearly 11 watts per kilo. He's going for it. Chris White putting out orange numbers. There it goes. Orange numbers across the board. Trying to reel that attack in. We've still got five kilometers to go. But giving it a good go, let's go over to Noel and just see them catching. He's a little way out the front. I wonder how long or if they will pull this back in. It'll be interesting to see if any of these breaks are successful. If if it's more than one rider and then not everybody catches as well. But it looks like Jonesy's back right off and the group comes back 
together again. But Ben's happy about that. Uh, I think aside from the, the 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 break every now and again, it's a pretty leisurely ride for the B cat here. Um, but the group comes back together after another attempted attack. 3.3 kilometers to go for the Cs. We can see a break off the front. G Moore's going for it. Over four watts per kilo. Pavel trying to match, bridge that gap. George is up into the orange numbers, trying to close that gap. I noticed that P. McMillan's back within the group. So at some point, the group's reeled him in as he himself has a go to try and bridge this gap. Is something here going to stick? Let's, uh, let's go across to have a look at Pavel because he's nearer the front as he's trying to bridge over to those front three which he does he brings a couple in with them are any of them going to get dropped behind it doesn't look like it although off the front p mcmillan's gone again p williams leading the charge to catch p mcmillan six over seven watts per kilo there really going out the front is this the point that's going to get him a gap in the final 2.7 kilometers to win the sea cat Pavel giving it a good go and George having a go now as well to try and bring that gap down. George is over five watts per kilo. Flying off out the front. Will the group in its draft catch those guys or not? Just jumped over to the bees because I've seen an attack here as well. Noel and D start going for it. They're in the orange numbers. Can they make it stick? And Corbin also in the orange numbers just behind. Will they make that stick? Or will the group bring them back in? Let's go further back into that group. Just see if that gap closes. And it looks like it does quite quickly. Although now still off the front slightly. Let's see. It looks like it's going to calm back down. And the group's going to get back together again. Let's go over to this C cat and see if that group. We've still got someone off the front. I can't tell from this angle who it is. Uh, John's on the front of this little group here. There is someone off the front a few seconds ahead of the, the rest of the group, I'd say. Let's have a look at the D-cap. These guys sitting in with a, a minute lead from the, from the main group out the front. I've got a minute gap over these guys. Uh, and then we'll probably jump over and watch Eric, who's coming towards the line, who's clearly going to win the A-cat race. We're going to do the final part of the race category by category because it's far too difficult to work out what's going on in the other races as well. So this is the C cat. We've got P. McMillan, who's the person off the front, three seconds ahead of Pavel. John just behind, two seconds back. And then the group, the majority of the group of Cs are still together uh, as Julia has sat within that group as well. Let's stay with Pavel because we'll be able to see who goes first in and around the group. Can anyone catch P. McMillan out the front? John giving it a go up over five watts per kilo. They look like they're kind of matching each other for power at the moment. The gap's not coming down. As Jay Lee puts out a little bit of a burst as well to get some speed up, but trying to catch the two guys out the front. He's going for it. S. West as well. He's up into the orange numbers over 10 watts per kilo. Into the final 200 meters here. A couple of the guys coming past. There's S. West. Can they catch P. McMillan? They are going to catch P. McMillan when early. Can't quite take it to the line. S. West, I think, is going to win this one with Jay Lee just behind. Pavel in third. And then head over to Julia. P. McMillan and Julia over the line too. You just want to watch that sprint from Julia's point of view as well. You can see S. West going off the front here uh, with some of the other guys. putting G. Moore putting out some high numbers as well. Julia sat quite away to the back of the group but we know what incredible sprint power julia has into the final 300 meters and she's still yet to really go for it you see s west big numbers now and now julia ramps it up 9.2 10.5 watts per kilo and look how quickly she powers through that group and she's got john bushel just in front of her who he, she finishes in front of that is incredible sprinting not quite enough to catch further out in the front absolutely amazing Final 900 meters for the bees. Then we've had a couple of attempted breakaways on this one. As D starts come from back to front here, pushing out the front. Noel's also putting out over seven watts per kilo to try and keep up with him. Uh, let's jump over to Noel. Just see if we can see a different angle. D starts gone for it. We're into the final 700 meters, uh, and he's kind of backed off slightly now. This is going to be a sprint to the line, I think, unless anyone else is going to come through. Noel slightly off the front. He is putting out higher watts. 
8.8. Jonesy behind of big numbers there with 7.4 as well. Is that just an attempt to keep up with his group, maybe? Let's jump forward, have a quick look at Noel Slevin. Oh, here we go. N Corbin's gone for it. Huge numbers, 12.4 watts per kilo. Ben Bishop trying to put out the power to keep up. Who within that group is going to catch? Let's have a look, see if we've got a... <laughs> Jonesy's looking at the riders in front. So N Corbin is going to possibly take it here. Can Ben catch him? Huge numbers. Ben coming through. Sprint to the line. Is Ben going to get it on the line? He does. Just about gets it on the line. C White and then a big group coming across the line with a couple of the guys behind. We'll have to have a look at the final results to see where those guys finish. Where are we with currently with the DCAT? One and a half kilometers still to go. We don't have anybody watching the front of the DCAT race, unfortunately, but we can definitely catch this group as they come across the line. We do have footage because I've recorded footage <laughs> looking ahead whilst I was trundling around at the back somewhere. Got D Gilmore, Gilmore, JJ. C Cross is the first one to go for it. What a great camera angle that is. DC also going for it over 10 watts per kilo behind as well, pushing out to try and catch C Cross on the line. Who's going to get there first? A Hugovine, who won the race on Thursday night, also into the orange numbers. D Gilmore, have some of those gone a bit earlier? JJ's going for it as well. I can't tell. Just around this corner is the line. I think it's going to be won possibly by DC. A Hugovine. Coming over the line next, JJ, Seacross, Earl Warrior, and then the whole group coming over, doing really well. And then back to that group with Kenneth. Let's see it from his point of view as we're coming towards the final kilometre. Into the final 700 metres, we've got Rob, Tim, A. Evans, I. Davies, Kenneth, and O. Hanel all together. I think Rob's putting out slightly higher numbers at the front, up towards the 5 watts per kilo. Hitting it now. Tim putting out 3.8. That group is slowly moving away from Kenneth. Uh, let's jump over to me and see if I caught any of this. I did. Here is Rob and Tim. Nothing between them at the moment. Couple of bike lengths as they're racing towards the line into the final. I think that marker is, is it 200 meters on this one? Great overhead shot there. As they're about to come towards the corner. Couple of small bursts. I Davies up over seven watts per kilo. Tim's there, Rob, A. Evans from behind. Who's this coming through here? <laughs> Just a, that looked like a casual afternoon ride on the bike coming through there. But Tim Glasby trying to catch I. Davies on the line. Doesn't quite. A. Evans will be next. Rob will be next over. Kenneth. And then O'Hanel, Rebel Spawn. And then me just plodding along towards the back. Let's round up those results and have a look what the tables look like. So I didn't manage to stay within the group then. Those rollers at the start completely destroyed me. And then, yeah, not feeling very well partway through. And I don't know what the cause of that was. Who knows? Maybe I ate lunch or something a little bit too close to the start time. I don't know. But what was great was to be able to watch all the sprints, catch the rest of the race at the end. Thank you so much to everybody who sent in videos. It made it a little bit more difficult to work out how to edit it. Took a little bit more time, but so worth it because you just get to see so much more of the race that you don't get to see when you're kind of on your own. Uh, but let's have a look at the results. Let's have a look at the A category then. Eric and John, Eric winning it, as we saw, taking full points. On to the B cat. We saw Ben sprinting to the line, just getting there in front of Neil. Dougie Munro just behind. Chris White, David Stark. Those guys seem to stick together for quite some time. And then it all, a couple of breakaway attempts uh, and then the sprint to the line. Ben Bishop so far has won four out of four. Hopefully someone can make, take the challenge and beat him in one of the next races. On to the Seacat. Again, we saw some incredible sprinting here. Spencer winning it, who went quite early, uh, getting there in front of John, just about. Pavel in third. Paul McMillan, who went early, couldn't quite hold on to the end. And we saw Julia's incredible sprint to take out. I don't know, was it three or four riders before getting to the line? Awesome racing. What I might have to do on these standings is take off the bottom few people because it's getting a little bit small to read. Uh, but we've had a few ever presents so far in there. Paul, Pavel, George, Julia and John have all done all four races. As I've said in the previous uh, videos, obviously until we get to eight races completed, uh, it's gonna the standings are going to look 
pretty weird and then they'll start to sort themselves out as we go along a bit further because it's the eight best results that count. Let's have a look at the DCAT. Damien C winning it uh, just about ahead of A. Hugovine, JJ, Latix. Again, we saw some brilliant sprints into the line across those guys as well. Uh, and some of the guys there, we've got Latix, Andrew Evans, Neil Brandon, Ben uh, Ben Jenkinson have all done four out of the four races. Next up, <laughs> next up, we have a slightly more challenging route. This one will be for, we be for one and a half times the points. We'll be heading to Watopia for our probably not our hilliest race, but the second hilliest race. We're going to be doing the mountain route, the epic KOM, 30 kilometers, 683 meters of climbing. And as I said, for that one, you get one and a half times the normal points. So I'm looking forward to that one. I say that, am I looking forward to that? It's a climb. That's not going to be a race for me. That is just going to be a ride to get to the top and see if I can finish somewhere within <laughs> somewhere within the group maybe possibly i guess we'll have to wait and see there will be no drafting and my weight is a big disadvantage up a hill but uh still looking forward to it that's on the 20th sunday the 20th of november at 10 o'clock uk time so still if you haven't joined one of the other races already still plenty of time We've got 10 races left top eight counts so there's still plenty of time to get in and get some points and get on that leaderboard uh, before it all starts to shift around a bit when everybody's done eight races but uh shame i couldn't do very well i don't know whether i still had the race from thursday in my legs because i pushed quite hard then or whether it was just it was the reverse route that completely knocked it out of me i don't know but fingers crossed i can do all right in the next one thank you as usual to all the channel members names coming up the screen now your support is amazing uh, but that is the end of this video. If you have enjoyed it, do hit like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.